So I've been working on getting the radiator in and working on the intake system. So I've got holes drilled uh, for bolts, some rubber to protect the aluminum from the painted metal. Got all the fittings uh, tightened down and um, with sealants and all that stuff. So that's all ready to go. And then over here, I'm uh, working on uh, clearancing the hood against the air system. I don't know if I can do this, but I'm going to zoom in under the hood and see if you can see. Way down, you can see the, the hood itself is still got a little bit of clearance to what is a mock-up of the um, air intake. So the air intake's on the far side. It's on this side, but I taped it to the far side because that's the closest point to hitting the hood. There's a there's a cross member that I have to clear, so I still have about a half an inch or a little less. So, surprise of all surprises, there's quite a bit of clearance. Um, so I'll be able to design the plexiglass um, or the Lexan uh, polycarbonate uh, box with a fairly generous. Uh, box size. I was really worried, and uh, turns out I don't need to be worried. I've got room under the hood here. So, anyway, I will try to leave a little bit of room for the engine to rock and move and uh, do my best to shape it accordingly. So, that is a relief to know that I've got the room to do it. So, again, here's the mock up just with the uh, four inch diameter um, aluminum. Um, flange here and basically the, I've got still a little bit of room above this point here so I can take it pretty much all the way out and uh, create the box across here and there's the underside of my hood it's going to look pretty nice I think end of the day with it, uh, the engine when you pop it up you go hey check that out so it should be fun it should be a nice looking engine bay when it's done so I've got the radiator installed now and uh, I've the technique I used was to put a uh, stainless bolt, Allen bolt, to head bolt, but through with a rubber grommet. Um, so drilled the hole through the sheet metal, and then I repainted everything, and then I clear coated it, and then put the grommet in, and I done that on both ends. And then at the bottom here, I did the same thing. Going, going down so that there's um, a bolt that's um, epoxied in there that's sticking down through a grommet. So it's like a pin that's sticking through the bottom of the radiator. And then here, grumble grumble, I've um, had to go for, I'm going to replace these, both the 45 and the 90, on both the N16 as well as down here in the N12. i got to go to the Earl's low profile fitting. So. Spend $180 to get new fittings, new hose in. It's because these things, the angles are wrong and they're too tight and everything else. So I'm going to move everything apart. I should get another couple of inches between these two connectors with the low profile fittings. And then rather than the uh, 120 degree fitting there that I was using to clear the, or the um, alternator, I'm going to have to go back to a 90 just because the 120 turns out points straight at the shroud. It's like really tight. I knew I'd struggle with this area here, but uh, we're, we're slowly slaying the dragon on this thing and throughout the weekend we'll, we'll make good progress and we've got the uh, um, plexiglass we're working on here. So this is the backing plate that mounts on uh, that plate there and then I've got some sheets here that I'm going to be bending and the idea is I'll come out at the bottom here and then go 90 degrees and then 45 at the top and then back and then the two end plates are so that's all three millimeter material down there this is quarter inch these end plates are quarter inch and then we'll be mounting that bracket uh, for the air tube to the filter on one of the ends here so I'm learning to play with Lexan I was trying to do the bending by heating stuff up in the oven and that sheet was my test sheet in the oven and it bubbled because uh, it just was uneven heat and part of the sheet was cold and wouldn't bend and part of the sheet was molten so 
I'm giving up, I'm going to use a heat gun and I'm going to put it in vice with a guide and I'm going to just bend it by hand and we'll see if I can get it done. And if I fail enough times and I run out of material, I'll just go to a shop and get them to do it. Well, I get the Bozo of the Week award. Um, I spent all this time making all this pretty stuff. And look at this interference fit here. Just, it's just brilliant. So there's my Dash 16 fitting absolutely colliding with the um, vacuum rail. And uh, anyway, if there is a solution, I'll have to um, weld in a bung at the lower down on the radiator and uh, en route the, uh, the front of the cylinder head lower than I'd like it under the radiator. It's not a crisis, but anyway, I'll have to put a block off plug here and then a new bung down below. Ah, oh, I tell you, that's going to set me back a little bit anyway. I should have, you know, it's, it's trying to model everything in 3D in your head and all these different things coming together. And I knew this was going to be a tight fit, but uh, anyway, that's disappointment for Saturday morning. So, I tried the technique of uh, heating with a heat gun the Lexan and then bending it. So I put it in the vise with some wood uh, to hold it in place and, you know, 15 inches is, is, is just a bit too far. I cannot get it all hot enough and hot evenly enough by going back and forth with the heat gun. There's just not enough heat, not enough even distribution of the heat. And it's kind of not a nice straight line. It's not. So I'm just experimenting with more of a bending this stuff. And uh, what I really need is a professional uh, plastic shop that's got the, um, the edge heated molding, um, um, you know, Break or bend, bending uh, apparatus. So, this is going to have to be outsourced. I will not be able to finish building the airbox um, with, uh, with the tools I have at hand. So, fail number two for the weekend. Well, I uh, decided to try to make it out of just flat sheets rather than bend it. I think that's actually a better idea. I control the dimensions better. Um, this one's just a little bit too large. I made this out of three millimeter material. I'm gonna now that I've got a pretty good idea on size. I'm gonna make it again out of six millimeter, quarter inch material, uh, just a little bit smaller so that it's a little easier to get in and out and doesn't uh, have any uh, significant hood clearance issues. So then I'll pull all the plastic uh, protective stuff off of it after it's all been finished gluing. But that was my first shot at it. I can show you how the um, you know, there's what the the, uh, the 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 gap looks like. It's actually pretty good, so not complaining. So there's the first draft of the uh, latest uh, air intake. So I've still got the protective plastic on things, so it looks weird. But uh, and it's not all final glued and sanded or anything. But um, basically, I can drop it over the air horns. So I've left enough of a gap here this time to drop it over the air horns and then um, a clear tube running into the two flex tubes and then over to the filter and then I'll have a, I'll have the uh, another piece of um, Lexan right there to just keep the hot air from getting to the air filter. So a little bit massive looking and bulky but uh, you know it's a uh, not as bad. I mean, once this is clear again, it'll look a little bit nicer. Um, hopefully, a lot nicer. So it, it's a kind of a necessary thing, right? I got to filter the air going in, and uh, I'm also keen on not having it super loud. And those ITBs can be pretty loud. So anyway, that's the way it's looking right now. I'll fi finish it up and uh, take another picture of it when it's all done. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, there is about a quarter of an inch between the hood and uh, the top of the air box, so I hope that's enough. We'll see. So there's the air box. It's not too uh, ugly. I mean, I'd love to get someone to manufacture this for me, but uh, it's uh, 
hard to uh, to make it in the, the exactly the right shape. I'll put it on the car and I'll show you what it looks like. Well, here's the labor of love, part three, and uh, this time I think I got it. So, air intake system is working. Um, so there's the can going through the clear tube with the flex couplings and into uh, the air box. And uh, you know, that's what I wanted. I wanted to be able to see the trumpets and uh, have enough airflow around and in front of the trumpets so that we weren't impairing their performance. Uh, the math is you're supposed to keep an inch and a half, you know, 45 or so millimeters between the edge of the trumpet and the, uh, the front wall. So I'm not sure. I've got uh, about half an inch above and below the trumpet and then uh, as I said you know one and three quarter inches uh, to the front and uh, it's a big open plenum um, this whole thing basically acts like uh, an air reserve um, I think it should be fine I can always go to the shorter trumpets I've got trumpets that are basically an inch shorter 20 millimeters shorter but I want to have the intake runner as long as possible so I'll swap back and forth and see whether or not um, you know the better performance with the shorter or the longer trumpets, but um, I've got uh, clearance underneath the uh, between the radiator here. I've got clearance here, and uh, so we're, we're we're good to go. And I can now start working on the remaining um, plumbing items over the next couple of days. I was expecting to get everything done, but uh, I've kind of run out of time this weekend. And uh, so I'll get on to the uh, cutting of the hoses and doing all that kind of stuff in a few more days. It turns out I'm missing a few small fittings here and there. And I do have to pull the radiator out and weld in the new bung. And that won't be here uh, until towards the end of the week. And then I'll get that new aluminum bug welded in and I can get all the tubing finished. So yeah, made made some good progress.